At Real Twisted Tales, we are always finding real life stories of the most terrible crimes. And let's be honest, you can't get much worse than removing someone's head. Today, we're going to tell you about our current top five most twisted beheadings. At number five, we have Mary Queen of Scots. Sentenced to death by Elizabeth I for treason, Mary's death did not go well, and according to eyewitness Robert Winkfield, the incompetent executioner missed his target with the axe ending up wedged in the back of her head. He literally had one job. Mary reportedly started groaning until after a second attempt, the executioner still didn't manage the complete decapitation, but left it hanging on by just a bit of flesh and gristle. One final chop saw her head completely removed, but while attempting to raise it to the baying crowd, the executioner dropped it due to not realising Mary was wearing a wig. Winkfield also noted that Mary's head was almost unrecognisable and that her lips remained moving for some time after her decapitation. One final gruesome fact in this already gruesome tale, when moving Mary's body, they noticed that a tiny pet dog had been hiding under her dress. It wouldn't abandon its dead mistress, but lay down in a puddle of blood between her severed head and her neck. <laughs> and number four is a bizarre tale of Mike the Headless Chicken. In 1945, farmer Lloyd Olson of Fruto, Colorado, was planning to eat one of his chickens, affectionately named Mike, for supper. He raised his axe and applied one swift blow. Unfortunately, the axe didn't quite sever Mike's head completely, leaving his jugular vein and brainstem intact. So the determined bird shook off the traumatic event and walked off, dragging his head behind him. What is it with these incompetent axemen? Given Mike's will to live, Olsen decided to care for the bird by feeding him using a mixture of milk and water and small grains of corn inserted into the hole in his neck. Mike became famous over the next two years, joining a tour and sideshow and earning Olsen over $50,000 a month in today's money, but sadly passed away choking on a piece of corn. His memory lives on though, as on the third weekend of May every year, they hold a Mike the Headless Chicken Day. Promise you, I have not made this up. At number three is a sad story of Leonard George Sifleet. Leonard was a commando for the second Australian Imperial Force during the Pacific War in 1943, fighting Japan. Whilst taking part in a perilous mission in Papua New Guinea, they were ambushed and captured by a hundred native villagers and handed over to the Japanese. Interrogated and tortured, he was confined for approximately two weeks and on the afternoon of the 24th of October 1943, he was taken down to the beach. Bound and blindfolded, surrounded by Japanese and native onlookers, he was forced to the ground and in one successful swing, he was beheaded using a traditional Japanese samurai sword. The officer who executed Sifleet ordered a soldier to photograph him in the act of the beheading, which became an enduring image of the war. It is believed to be the only surviving depiction of a Western prisoner of war being executed by a Japanese soldier. And number two, the violent life of Richard Francis Cottingham. Nicknamed the Times Square Killer, Cottingham is an American serial killer and rapist who murdered a minimum of 11 young women and girls in New York and New Jersey between 1967 and 1980. One of his most twisted and gruesome murders was a torture and killing of two sex workers. He severed both of their heads and hands before setting fire to the mattresses to burn their torsos. Fleeing the scene, Cottingham left with the severed head and hands, which to this day have never been recovered. He was eventually caught in 1980 in a New Jersey motel while in the act of torturing another teenage sex worker. Cottingham was convicted of five murders, plus multiple charges of kidnapping and sexual assaults. And if it couldn't get any worse, in 2009, nearly 30 years after being convicted for the five murders, Cottingham admitted to a journalist that he had committed at least 80 to 100 
perfect murders of women, six were subsequently confirmed and those cases were closed. He is currently rotting in a state prison in New Jersey. And in at the number one spot, we have John Price. In a small town in Australia lived John Price. He was a kind and loving father, now living on his own, but on a fateful night, his ex-partner, Catherine Knight, returned to his house, looking for revenge for being rejected. Catherine was an abusive woman, full of anger, who worked at a local abattoir. She was very adept with her knives, and by all accounts, she actually enjoyed slaughtering the cattle. After seducing John, and waiting until he was asleep, she took her knives from her bag, and while straddling John's sleeping body, she drew the knife high above her head and started stabbing him. As John didn't turn up for work, the police were called, and on entering his home, they came across the most disturbing scene. In a wardrobe, they found the dismembered parts of John's body. Hanging from the door was his skin, and bubbling away in a large pot on the stove was his head. And it gets worse. Catherine's intention was to cook parts of John and serve them to his children. And how sick is that? Catherine became the first woman in Australian history to be given a full life imprisonment without the chance of parole. And I can't help but think that that's probably for the best. Hi everyone, thanks for watching our top five most twisted beheadings. And if you want to find out more about Catherine Knight boiling John Price's head, then watch the full story by clicking on a link or by visiting our website at realtwistedtales.com. Thanks everyone and keep safe.